From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Candidates for fall elections in Montana will be chosen in the June primaries. Yesterday, we showed you the top Republican candidates. Coming up this morning, we'll take a look at the top Democrat contenders. See how gas prices may affect some people's summer travel plans. Coming up. Happy Friday, Southwest Montana. It's uh, right around 6.30. Chad Lehman, Matt Elwood with you there. A few thicker clouds there yep. in the mining city this morning. Uh, we are starting to see the clouds roll in. Mm -hmm. uh, just looking out on the weather patio. Do you see my, my little furry No, I don't see there? your rabbit is not out on the stone mm -hmm. currently. Okay. Maybe well, it'll we'll return see. for the just forecast. Who knows? I have to have that <laughs> scheduled. Hey, temperatures this morning, not bad. Um, 30s for most of us. It's chilly. Mainly because we're going to be dealing with some wind. You'll probably want those heavier jackets or coats, lighter coat. I don't know, however you want to do it. But it's going to involve some rain. So raincoat is really what we're getting at for today. Uh, often on rain showers with wind gusts in excess of 30 to 40 miles an hour. In some cases, we could reach 50. Windy afternoon, spotty showers through the mid-afternoon, and then our skies begin to clear. Talk about that weekend forecast and a warm up by early next week. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Stormy, that's the name of the Is that the name? The okay, yeah. Stormy's coming. Not out there, but a uh, robin twice the size of that <laughs> rabbit currently walking around <laughs> out the window. <laughs> All right, 6.30 now, our top story this half hour. Primary ballots expected to go out to voters this week. Senior political reporter Ashley Nurbavig has more on what to expect from state Democratic candidates this election cycle. Thursday, we took a look at GOP primary races for the Montana State Legislature, and today we're going to be looking at Democratic candidates and what they want to do differently after a tough election season in 2020. I'm a progressive, and I'm probably the most progressive Democrat in this primary, honestly. But I know that we have got to go and talk with Republicans, regardless of whether we agree, and we've got to let them know that we're looking for middle ground. Jacob Torgerson is a student at Helena College and has been a prominent activist for LGBTQ plus and other social issues. He was second to file for House District 81 after Jake Troyer, a longtime Helena resident who owns a strategic consulting company in town. Troyer also served as communications director for the Department of Labor and Industry during the Bullock administration. I've spoken to thousands of voters across the district and they're ready for someone who is not extreme, more middle of the road, and wanting to work together and reach across the aisle. The third candidate is Melissa Romano, Montana's 2018 Teacher of the Year, who twice lost a statewide campaign against Elsie Arntzen for Montana Superintendent of Public Instruction. You know, we need a leader. House District 81 needs a leader who can bridge the divide and um, cross that divisiveness that was happening in the last legislative session. We need um, more of the middle. We need people who can bring people together. While Torgerson, Troyer, and Romano all want to build coalitions once at the legislature, House District 81 has elected Democratic candidate in every election held in the last 10 years. Whoever wins the primary will have many Democratic voters to count on for the general. The situation is different in House District 23, which covers a large chunk of South Great Falls. In 2020, longtime Democratic legislator Brad Hamlet lost by a 107 vote margin to Representative Scott Kearns, a Republican from Great Falls. And we were told not to go out in public and talk and shake hands and all that. So uh, the Democratic Party did everything wrong in that campaign. Hamlet's primary opponent is Melissa Smith, a professional pianist and community organizer. Smith also ran in 2020 for a House seat in Great Falls. She said the pandemic was a major issue, but so was the general attitude toward Democratic candidates. The national narrative came into Montana and really dominated, and people weren't listening really to what Democrats were saying. In 2020, every single legislative and statewide Democratic candidate lost in Great Falls and Cascade County, which were both once Democratic strongholds. Between the Senate and the House, Republicans controlled 98 seats during the legislative session. If the GOP gains a total of 100 seats between the two chambers in this next election, the party will have the power to put constitutional amendments to voters. Election officials are expected to mail out primary ballots this week. Stay with MTN News for more coverage of these primary contests ahead of Election Day, June 7th. In Helena, Ashley Nurbovic, MTN News. 6.34 now in other news this morning, the Food and Drug Administration says it's working with manufacturers to get formula back on shelves safely. It's also streamlining the review process to get it imported faster. But until that happens, parents are doing whatever it takes to feed their babies. Newsy's national correspondent James Packard has more. Parents across America facing a terrible dilemma. I don't mean to cry. I don't mean to start getting emotional. 
A crisis of how to keep babies fed as formula disappears from store shelves across the country. When there is no other option of feeding your kid, what are, what's my option? Parents resorting to desperate measures. I'm starting to hoard. I'm starting to scour. We're going further out. I'm going to areas where I know that there's a low population. What am I doing, you know? It, it, it's unreal. The latest retail data shows about 40% of the most popular formula brands were sold out late last month. That's up from 31% just two weeks earlier. In other words, the problem is getting worse. Formula is so scarce, big retailers like CVS, Walgreens, Target are limiting purchases and specialized formulas for food allergies and other issues are even harder to find. Experts blame supply chain challenges, inflation, and a recall of some batches of the popular Similac brand. A Michigan plant that makes Similac was shut down back in February after formula produced at the plant sickened four infants. This week, the FDA announced it would allow the plant to produce some formula on a case-by-case -case basis. And the manufacturer, Abbott Nutrition, says it's producing more in other plants from as far away as Ireland to fill the gap. But experts say it might not be enough. We won't be able to escape the um, general shortages that we've had in, the, in this category just because of the pandemic. The White House says the FDA is working, quote, around the clock to address the shortage. But lawmakers like Senator Mitt Romney are calling for more action from the FDA and USDA. He sent a letter to federal officials this week saying, in part, I am deeply concerned about the apparent lack of an effective mitigation strategy and urge both agencies to move as fast as possible to safely resolve this situation. In the meantime, parents are doing everything they can to get their hands on even one can of formula, even if it means driving hours, sometimes across state lines. Others joining parents groups on Facebook to see if anyone has a can to spare. I found some that were able to give me formula or sell me formula. And, you know, they tell me, hey, will you watch out for this for me? Because I'm needing this for my child or that. It's just one of the things we've kind of had to band together. And I've met quite a few people because of it. Now, Abbott Nutrition finally giving a timeline for when baby formula from its closed Michigan plant will be back on store shelves. Company says the plant could be up and running again within the next few weeks. That's if the Food and Drug Administration gives the okay. However, Abbott says it could take up to 10 weeks to get supply back to normal. Abbott's Michigan plant shut down earlier this year after three brands of formula were recalled over bacterial contamination. 637 now. The upward trend when it comes to gas prices doesn't show signs of stopping anytime soon. National average for a gallon of regular gas has hit another record, $4.41. Diesel now at $5.55 a gallon nationally. Here in Montana, the average price for a gallon of regular gas hit $4.25. Diesel up to $5.50 a gallon. As fuel prices continue to hit records and with Memorial Day, the unofficial start of summer just around the corner, it is affecting people's summer travel plans. James Tom Buchanan went to find out. With gas prices continuing to rise, many are already dialing back plans for summer travel. But we're definitely thinking about um, cutting back or at least staying in state uh, rather than looking at going to the coast or something like that. Stefan Wall says that filling up his gas tank has an effect on his budget and may very well prevent adventures this summer. With average national gas prices hitting $3 for regular gas at this time last year, filling a Ford F-150 with a 26-gallon tank would cost about $78. Filling that same tank a year later would cost you over $114. But living in Montana, finding alternatives to transportation by car can be difficult. You know, you live in Montana, there aren't a lot of options with public transportation or um, even carpooling necessarily, so we kind of grin and bear it. Because of high gas prices, some hobbies may not get as much attention as they did in previous years. For example, Anthony Cacase participates in stock car racing, and with no track in Helena, he has to drive out of town if he wants to enjoy his sport. It will definitely increase the cost, you know, just to get to and from the dirt tracks, but um... You know, that's, it's a hobby, so if I have to cut it out, I can, no problem with that. And Nick Givok says that new ways of getting around might be necessary during this time. Carpool, drive less, uh, ride your bike to work. I mean, do what it takes. Reporting in Helena, Tom Buchanan, MTN News.